Kyle and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to be combining two seemingly unrelated images into a new scene but in a convincing kind of way. Now this technique is based off of a Photoshop video um, tutorial that was shared with me and we're going to try to see if we can replicate the same kind of effect but using different images. For the most part, a lot of the steps can be translated directly into PaintShop Pro, but there's a few things we're going to have to do differently. And the first one, starting out, is isolating and desaturating a specific color in an image. So let's get to that. So now for blending this water scene into the road scene, which we're going to get to later, one of the key components of that blending to be effective is for the water to have a similar hue as the road. And really in this case what that basically means is just that we need to desaturate it. Uh, Photoshop seems to have an ability of allowing you to desaturate a specific channel, say the cyan channel, on a given image. PaintShop Pro doesn't have that, but we have other techniques of being able to do that. One that I'll just mention very briefly is that uh, within these tools that you see here you can choose the saturation up and down and then Essentially, by left clicking and dragging, you're going to have the effect of desaturating. And you can do the whole entire scene this way if that's the way that you prefer. One technique that I'm about to show is the one that I would recommend and I've touched on in another one of my videos on advanced masking, but it's essentially just creating a new layer off of a reference color and then doing a subtraction so that we can create a mask to isolate all the parts that we want to desaturate. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is create a new raster layer and then use our color pick tool just to get a color that's like somewhere in the middle of this water. That's roughly the color of the whole water scene. Then use the fill tool, which is here, and then fill that whole layer. Now we can change the blend mode to difference and what you'll see is what we've done is created an image where everything that looks similar to that blue is going to be darker than everything that is very different, which is kind of like the pig so and the bird. And this is the kind of isolation we want to go for. So now with the background pig water image selected, let's duplicate that. And then let's go down to mask and then say from image. And since we only have one image, we'll keep that and then choose source luminance. So then what that now does, if we turn off our reference delta layer and we turn off the background, is we can see that it's kind of isolate, it's kind of almost cut out everything except for the pig, but we want it to be a little bit more dramatic than that. So we're going to make some modifications to the mask itself. And in particular, we're going to increase the contrast by using levels. And really what we're trying to do is just enhance the define lines between what is really black and what is white. And in doing so, we can isolate the pig a little bit more succinctly or tightly without losing some of that natural blending into the other layers. So that looks pretty good to me. You can see how almost everything around is black except for where the pig is. And so then now if we turn this back on, we're back to normal, but since we have our mask, we can take the background and then just say adjust hue saturation and then desaturate. And what you'll see is we've pretty much kind of nicely even gone all the way around all the fine detail areas and desaturated. We do still have some areas that we need to clean up. And in this case now, we can just use our desaturation brush on little areas and not the whole thing. So I'll do some real quick layer management, deleting our reference, merging down, and then I can just use my desaturation brush to kind of clean up some of these lingering green areas. All right, so now we can bring this pig image that's been desaturated into our road scene. So now looking at our road scene, I'm going to bring the pig image into view. And I just want to mention before we get into blending these two that one thing that is kind of important is um, having matching lighting and perspective to at least some degree. Without that, 
I think no matter how well you blend and do all of the different things that we're about to do, it's not going to matter if they look completely different. Like if the perspective is completely different or the lighting is completely different, it's going to be a hard sell um, to get these two images to go together. So some of the key components, obviously a wide angle lens was used between both images and as well, it was a pretty shallow um, you know, perspective, meaning the person who took the photo was pretty close to the floor, the, the seemingly floor of each image. So their perspectives are close enough that we should be able to blend the two together. So now we can copy the pig image and then paste it as a new layer onto the road image. And use the pick tool just to kind of, you know, arrange it roughly where you want it to be. And if necessary, you can decrease the opac opacity to kind of align it and get a reference of what's behind it. And then next we want to create a mask. So we can go down here and say show all and this is with the pig image selected so now we have a white mask which means we're going to show everything and then we have the pig layer so now that we're doing a mask we can simply take our brush and set its color to black which is going to be hiding and just in case we need to undo a little bit we can set the secondary color to white increase the brush size, and we kind of want to go with a lower hardness just so that we can kind of get a blending sort of feel going on. And all we have to do is just start painting black on the mask itself. That's important. If it's not doing what you're expecting, then it could be that you're not painting on the mask, but the actual photographic layer itself. So just blending to get that initial, that initial sort of shape and all those hard lines out. And then we'll, we're going to refine this a little bit more because we're going to have to do it in layers. Okay, so we have our initial now where there's just sort of the water, you know, at least somewhat casually blended in with the scene. But to get it to be a little bit more convincing, what we're going to do first is duplicate the whole group and then make that invisible. And then for the group below, with the group selected, we want to change its blend layer to hard light. So then now you can kind of see, you know, a lot more of the road texture comes through, even though we still have some luminance from the water. So now we can turn on our copy that we had on the, on the top, and then we can further, you know, pull back its mask by erasing just even a little bit more. And that way now underneath is that sort of, you know, textured version of the water. Now blending into what's sort of like the less textured version of the water, if you will. So then it's more gradual. It's a more gradual transition. So then now you can start to see, you know, this, this sort of pig water blending a lot better into the scene. Um, there is a few things we can do with contrast to try to improve its blend effect. So in our top group, we can add an adjustment layer. And I'm going to choose levels. And then what we can do is kind of bring up the darks just a little bit, just to kind of darken that whole thing so that it doesn't look like the water is so separated from the road. And then finally, what you can kind of see is that, you know, the, the, the background has a little bit more of like a red tint to it. So um, we, can, we can apply that to the pig and bird sort of image just by changing its white balance a little bit. So, and so we need to expand the group, go to the image layer, and then go to adjust white balance. And then what we're going to want to do is actually give it just a slightly warmer feel, but also a slightly purpler feel. And just to kind of improve the composition a little bit, I'm going to use the, the crop tool just to kind of cut out some of that extra sky and really bring the focus down to the pig on the road. And that's it. So looking at the final image, I think that given the way the water was photographed in this case for the pig, um, it, it's a little bit less obvious or less convincing that the pigs in water, it looks more like it's just kind of buried in the road. But 
Um, you know, if, if you had a, a water scene that had a little bit more reflection to it, maybe, so that you'd see a little bit more of that reflected detail, it would give you more of a sense like it was um, in water kind of floating in the middle of this road. Um, but the technique is still the same. It's just that you'd be using a more appropriate image. Um, I was just trying to find one that was a little fun and match the background in perspective and would just allow us to cover the same technique. So the keys being just being able to reduce the saturation of the water and then using the different sort of masks and hard light blend layering to allow for the natural transition of the water scene into the road. So that's it for me. I hope this video helped and helped explain some techniques that are similar to the video that I mentioned earlier. There's a link to that video in the description. And as always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest other content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of my new content, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support me or my channel, uh, check out the Patreon link that's on the screen, and I'll see you guys next time.